Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. Real Estate Coaching Radio is the nation's number one daily radio show for realtors who demand authentic, real-time coaching. Get ready for fluff-free, unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what's truly working to get you into action, helping others, and making money now in today's real estate market. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Welcome back. We have a great show for you guys this week. This is actually a show that Julie um, wrote, and it's based on a lot of the – Julie, I just chatted you something. It's based on a lot of the uh, notes for our upcoming uh, book that gets released, I think it's June of this year. And you guys will be hearing a lot about that, of course. Um, And this is going to be some fun content because we did spend a lot of time, and Julie specifically spent a lot of time researching it. So 2019, as I think all of you will finally agree, as we've been telling you for the past couple of years, is going to be a reset year. It's going to be a year that's not like anything else you've ever experienced before, especially true if you've only been in the business for the last um, like 10 years. Because the fact is, guys, everything is going to change this year. In some of your markets, you're going to see a radical change. You're going to see changes that are going to scare you, changes that are going to cause you to question your sanity for being in real estate. All those types of things happen in um, what we call a phase two market. By the way, you need to go back and listen to our podcasts that we did. Just go to timandjulieharris.com, go to the search bar at the top, and put in the word phases or put in the word reset, and you'll find the four series of podcasts we did Um, that's all about the reset, all about the real estate reset. You need to listen to those so you can identify what uh, phase your own market's in. And then I also want you to do that for the sake of knowing what your – uh, how to explain the reset to your sellers. That's really the main reason that we did that is to sort of calm uh, nerves for you, but also so that you can become more professional when explaining the different phases of the real estate reset to your sellers. So go back and listen to that. So guys, the reality of it is we are in the market that Julie and I have been trying to prepare all of you for, all of you for, for almost the last two years. We talked about it, um, you know, literally two years ago. We said we saw signs of the market eroding. We saw it first in New York City. All of our great friends at Douglas Elliman were telling us about it. We saw different markets changing. Um, Miami was changing. Now we're seeing all of our great agents in Miami. They're having to do price reductions that are 30 to 40% off with the people paid. Hey, guys, it's back. There's no denying it. Some of you are still denying it. I realize that. I read your emails. Some of you are saying it's not affecting me. The fact is it is affecting you. I'll give you another example. I was on a call today with a new coaching client, Josh. And Josh, if you're listening, hello. And Josh and I were talking about um, – Palm Desert, La Quinta in uh, particular, and he was telling me how the market's actually heating up. <laughs> how he was telling me, you know, he didn't, you know, basically the market was hotter, how things are selling faster, and all the rest of it. And then he also told me he just took a listing for $2.3 million. And I asked him about that listing for $2.3 million. It turns out the house has been listed three times, and the original time it was listed two years ago, it was listed for $3 million. And so I asked him this very obvious question for anyone that's been in the market for a long time. Do you think that back when they listed it for $3 million, it was it was you know maybe realistically priced somewhere in the realm of uh, realism based on other sold comps? And he said, yes, I know it was, to which I said, well, then that tells me and it should tell you that your market has dropped by a third in some of these markets and some of these neighborhoods in just the past couple of years. So, guys, the market is going to be changing. It's going to, if you're ill-prepared, if you don't have the scripts, if you don't have the skill set, and frankly, if you don't have the mindset, this market will take you out. These types of markets are the types of markets where you have to have a mastery of bedside manner, where you're going to have to be constantly monitoring your own mindset because – and I don't like to use the word mindset because mindset is a place where people go to hide. They'll say, I'm working on my mindset opposed to actually doing the real work of real estate. But the reality of it is in a market like this, if you're not constantly monitoring – um, you know, it's an old, here's something you should all write down and remember, show emotion without being emotional, because what happens is if you start feeling the other person's emotions, the sellers who are going through stress, the sellers who don't like to hear the reality of pricing, all those types of things, if you start absorbing those things, what it will cause you to do is lose all of your edge, because you will find yourself emotionally exhausted at the end of the day and not very enthusiastic about getting you know, back to work. And that's what's happening, and that's already what started happening to a lot of you last year. And I think this email that Julie's about to read from one of our listeners is a great example of uh, what can happen. And, how, and then Julie and I are going to answer this question, hopefully you know, reel in the fact that you know, this is a changing market, and you guys need to be, again, 
focusing on mindset, skill set, and really the last point is you really need to work on presentations. So many of you have been more or less winging it, maybe winging it at a high level, but you don't have a formalized approach to your real estate business. No pre-listing pack, no listing presentation. No, you don't, you're not pre-qualifying. You're not being a professional. And again, in a market like this, there really is no room for that. So in this, this year, more than ever, you have to increase the effort and don't decrease your goal. So Julie, why don't you read that email? Yes, and this is from, we will call her Agent Linda, who writes, Hi, Tim and Julie. Just want to say thanks. I'm a new client trying to get back in the groove. Went through cancer with my daughter last year, so chemo every other week, etc. But we are all good now. I'm trying to get back into production. I'm listening to the podcast daily and enjoy your honesty. My question is, I get motivated, but then I get distracted. I think it's PTSD. Any words of encouragement? I would like to keep consistent. It what are probably your is a little First bit of, of all, PT- sorry that it, she went th- through all that. That's horrible, and we're glad that you're better. But it, that's a real thing. She better. probably She's does better. have that, right? Yeah. It was her daughter. But yes, yes, glad your daughter's better. But you might be suffering a little bit of PTSD. That's a real thing. So don't discount that, first of all. It would make sense if you were. Um, but second of all, the advice, the suggestion, if we are coaching you, this is what, exactly what I'd tell you to do. And by the way, this is in our book, Harris Rules, too. But really, you should define what the three to five most important things are that you need to do every single day to move your business forward. And to, do, to know what those things are, sorry to give you more things to do, but really, I can't do this work for you. You have to do it yourself. Just get a copy of our, uh, and it's free, by the way, of the Real Estate Treasure Map. And the Real Estate Treasure Map is your fill-in-the-blank business plan. And when you do the fill-in-the-blank business plan, what it's going to do is help you drill down on all the things that are most important to you. And what you'll find out is it always comes down to three to five things that you have to do every single day. For example, those three to five things might be the number of proactive contacts you have to make every day. Um, everybody, based on the real estate treasure map, based on their, and you'll discover your uh, what we call your magic number, which is the number of listings you need at all times. Maybe it's five, maybe it's ten. You need to make that number of contacts every day. So, for example, if you needed to have uh, your magic number after doing your treasure map, sorry for using all this Harris vernacular on you guys, but it's easy to get all this information for free. Just go to freecoachingcallsforagents.com, freecoachingcallsforagents.com. Uh, not only will you have an opportunity to speak with one of our new member coaches, but you're also going to you know, get all those books for free. Real Estate Treasure Map, Think and Grow Rich for Real Estate, um, your 12-month lead generation plan, just all kinds of stuff we give you for free. Um, just go to freecoachingcallsforagents.com, where many of you are listening to the show right now off of our website, and you can see there's a box right underneath the player button where you can just put in your information. You get all that, uh, inf- all those books and whatnot for free that way as well. So don't waste time. Just go ahead and download that. First thing I want you to do is print out the real estate treasure map. Real estate treasure map, again, is your fill-in-the-blank business plan. And then it's going to, in doing so, you're going to figure out what your real estate magic number is. That's the number of contacts you need to be making every single day, predicated based on the number of listings that you need to have at all times to cover all your financial goals. Then the other things you want to be doing every single day is you want to make sure you do every bit of lead follow-up that you have and have it all done by the end of the day. Don't, like, not call leads back practice what we call furiously fast lead follow-up. So lead follow-up be another critical thing you need to do every day. On a personal note, we always suggest that you exercise every day. Julie and I are big advocates, with quotes around it, of Orange Theory. <laughs> Orange Theory is something definitely works for everybody. You don't have to be an athlete. We certainly weren't when we started you know, a year and a half ago. But that's a huge thing to do. It's a, your body needs it. Your energy levels will increase. Um, And along those lines, we'll just stay on Orange Theory as far as minimum standard. You also want to make sure, especially if you're coming off an emotional event, which frankly, guys, most of you this year, because of the nature of the market, you're going to be experiencing emotional events on a regular basis. It makes exercise, it makes sleep, it makes your nutrition, all those things ever more important. Um, And, uh, yeah, so you know, I'll put in the third minimum standard you want to have is taking care of your mind, body, and soul. The fourth minimum standard we always suggest is that you intentionally and proactively show gratitude every single day. And one of the things that we have, you know, we ask all of our top coaching clients to do is overtly send, you know, you can do it digitally, I don't really care, but five, just something that shows recognition, that shows gratitude. You have to recognize somebody by showing them gratitude. It could be a past client. It could be your kid. It could be your spouse. It doesn't matter. The act of showing gratitude and appreciation has this sort of magical side effect, which I really don't need to understand. I know it's kind of in the spiritual realm, but the reality of it is is you connect with those people on a higher level, and everybody likes to feel appreciated. 
And the fourth thing we always suggest is every single day that you absolutely positively are reviewing what your goals are. So go back and listen to and read your real estate treasure map every day and review what your goals are. So the two rule again, go to freecoachingcallsforagents.com. We'll give you all this information. As far as consistently being motivated, I'm telling you there's no hack to that. There's no book you can read. There's no number of jumping jacks you can do or no, no matter of co uh, caffeine you can intake. If there was, trust me, I would have discovered it already because I'm a caffeine abuser. <laughs> what you need to do is you just need to uh, do a number of things. And really, if you're finding your, uh, your motivation is waning, it really does help to have the treasure map done, your business plan done, because that gives you a, a true north. And then following, establishing what your daily minimum standards are and sticking to those. A little hack if you want one is do everything that's most important that you need to have done every day in the morning. Everybody, male, female, doesn't matter your age, will have and does have better energies in the morning because your hormones and everything else are more in balance in the morning. You're more focused in the morning. So set aside all the, you know, however much time it takes for you to do all your heavy lifting every day. Maybe it's three hours, maybe it's five hours, but do that every morning. And then the afternoon, if things start to kind of come unglued, it doesn't matter because you've done all the most important things first. Any other thoughts on that, Julie? Well, we're going to do a deep dive into pretty much all of the points that you just gave to her email. And we're going to talk about why is it that sometimes we, I mean, pretty much all the time, you guys know this stuff, but you get in your own way. So I'll use this as kind of a segue to get into our topic of 2019, don't decrease the goal, increase the effort. And I think this is a mantra that we're going to drive home this year, certainly first quarter, don't decrease the goal. You know, maybe that's on a daily basis when you have a frustrating day. Maybe it's when you just did your treasure map and you realize you're going to have to do 10 more deals this year to accomplish all of your goals. But don't decrease the goal. Just increase the effort. It's actually easier. So, again, most of you have completed some sort of plan, hopefully the real estate treasure map. That requires that you get your schedule worked out. There's a whole lot involved in that real estate treasure map. So if you haven't done that, you know, time ran out last week, but get it done. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put all of this stuff together so that future you – can say thank you to present you for actually implementing. It's not enough to just have the plan. You've got to do the plan. But before I get to those action steps, we've got to talk about present you. That's today. Why is it that the present you sometimes screws over future you by not taking the right actions or not acting quickly enough, even though the present you totally understands and believes in your plan? So this should be resonating with some of you. Again, maybe not on a daily basis, but when you have those frustrating days where you're slammed with showings and you know, maybe a closing goes sideways, you know most of what Tim just went through. But why is it that in spite of knowing it and believing it, sometimes you don't do it? What makes people act against their own self-interest? I've been intrigued by this. Um, I was following some breadcrumbs on this thought because, you know, Tim, you and I refer to – you know, trying to get them to say, hey, thanks, Tim, for having it together. <laughs> we want you to say that more often. So I decided to dive into the potential psychology of this whole thing, and I discovered well, Julie, that there's something example. called present let's, bias. Let's, yes, go ahead. Let's give, let's, give, let's give them a fun example, okay? So you, you, let's do a little confession first, okay? <laughs> so Julie sure. and I haven't, haven't gone to Orange Theory for a month. Okay, we haven't gotten to Orange Theory for a month because we took some time off, and but mostly because we were doing a ton of traveling. And um, so that's that's the longest period of time, and you know, basically since it's been over a year since we have, haven't gone to Orange Theory. But we don't look like fat slobs because we've been keeping to our diet and whatnot. And so when I, you know, when I look in the mirror, I look at Julie. You know, and you realize it's certainly not present Julie that's keeping Julie or keeping Tim looking sharp. It's past Tim and past Julie. That's true. Right? When I look at my when I look at myself and I say, Well, thank you, past Tim, for doing all those horrible exercises at Orange Theory that causes you, even though you didn't work out for a month, to look good. Right? And then the same can go for basically any aspect. When you guys are experiencing, um, you know, it's, it can go down to a cup of coffee you're drinking right now. You didn't, that past version of you earned the money and made that cup of coffee for you. So you can thank the past you. If you're enjoying some level of financial security, you need to thank the past version of you. If you're in a house right now that you've always dreamed of having, that was a goal that you set in a past version of you, in the, in the past version of you doing all the work, right? 
Now, if you're experiencing a dearth of things that make you proud of what you're accomplishing, it's because the past version of you wasn't working that hard. If you're looking in the mirror and you don't like what you see, it's because the past version of you decided to go for the Doritos versus the treadmill. If the past version of you it was not willing to do what they didn't want to do and they didn't want to do it at the highest level, and you're now looking at your bank account and your bank account doesn't look like you want it to look, then you need to, you know, maybe realize the past version of you is a little bit lazy. You guys get it? It's just a little mind hack. Thank the past version of you. Show gratitude towards the past version of you, and acknowledge maybe the past version of you in more areas that you'd like to admit was a little bit lazy. Does that make sense, Julie? It does, and this is indeed, this is not just something we're making up. This is not this woo-woo thing. This is real. I did some research on this, and there is something in psychology called present bias. This means that it's human nature to put short-term uh, needs and wants ahead of long-term goals. So procrastination, that's one way to call it. You might call it creative avoidance, but it is real, and you've got to acknowledge and defeat it this year. So remember, new mantra, don't decrease the goal, increase the effort. Psychologists and economists have done lots of studies on this phenomenon, and they have a label for it. Economists call it hyperbolic discounting. Now, that sounds bizarre. What does that mean? So I looked it up on Wikipedia. Okay, I hit the Google button. Given two similar rewards, humans show a preference for the one that arrives sooner rather than later. Humans are said to, quote, discount the value of the later reward by a factor that increases with the length of the delay. Okay, so their example was, in other words, almost everyone would rather have a $20 bill today versus having $30 tomorrow. You want it now, but that's super counterproductive. So I found something in Harvard Business Review. <laughs> okay, they said, so this is my nerd out warning, many people feel disconnected. This is really interesting. Many people feel disconnected from the individuals that they'll be in the future, and as a result, discount the rewards that would later benefit them. But even brief exposure to aged images of the self can change that behavior. So here's a little bit of fun research from Hal Hirschfeld. Uh, he ran fMRI scans on subjects and found that the neural patterns seen when they described themselves 10 years in the future were markedly different from those seen when they described their current selves. The waves were basically the same as when they were shown a stranger. In other words, when you blow off your productivity, your brain is unconsciously making it the problem of a stranger. It's not even you that's going to suffer. It's some weirdo future stranger you. It's another person in your head. So how do these people who study this stuff suggest that we overcome it now that they've proven that it's a real thing? They say it's simple. You have to imagine yourself how you actually look, but the older you, having, doing, seeing, and being what your goals are, not allowing your subconscious to think it's the future problem of you as a stranger. So again, this is a little woo-woo stuff, but I mixed some economics and Harvard and different things in so it didn't get too bizarro. But you do have to get serious about actually seeing future you and not letting, you know, setting future you up and not letting future you down. So the homework to actually start implementing this, we always like to keep it practical and tactical. Implement the act of imagining yourself with what your goals in five areas of life actually call for. Goals in five areas of life are straight out of the treasure map. Take a look at yourself in your new Ferrari if that's on your goal list. Take a picture of yourself holding a check to you, future you, for 100 grand with savings in the memo if that's on your goals list. Set a reminder alarm at the end of each business day to look at these images. The point that we're making is to not make future you a stranger not to make it their problem, not to procrastinate problems into the future. And Tim, you started off the top of this podcast talking about, um, you know, the PTSD symptom, uh, symptom of maybe going through some health challenges. I had a call with uh, one of our elite coaching clients who was talking about having a little PTSD, knowing what the previous recession was like, and oh, yeah. feeling herself being nervous about doing things like investing in rental property because she has this fear that settled in of what happened last go around, even though future Anna has tons of savings. She's got her kids set up with 529s. She sets aside 15% off the top of every check. She's in a totally different position now than she was going into the last uh, recession. So this whole like future you, past you thing, this is a, a real um, psychological thing we have to deal with. 
And I think the point here is to make it real. It is you that you're messing with. I have a coaching client I tease all the time that, you know, if you're not taking action today, you really are screwing the future person. And we have this picture that we created of her, you know, being like little old lady realtor with her walker, having to door knock, pushing the doorbell with her cane, okay, because her present self didn't get it together fast enough. And that really motivates her because she made it real for her. You've got to personalize your goals. Does that make sense? It does. You know, Julie, it always comes back down to the same thing. You know, you and I have done coaching. I was in preparation for an event Julie and I are doing next month. I was sort of trying to figure out how to explain to the audience how many, how many coaching calls we've ever done. And between just Julie and I, now including all of our coaches, we have 31 coaches. And Julie and I have done easily over 100,000 individual half-hour coaching calls. There's nobody in the nation that's done more coaching calls than Julie and I have. It's pretty much impossible that anybody has. We're about as real coaches you possibly can muster. And I was thinking, like, it's always – people are always looking for the secret. Or they're always looking for a hack or a shortcut. And there really isn't one, unfortunately. Otherwise, I promise you, in all those coaching calls, talking with all those really wonderful agents, we would have discovered it. If there is anything that even remotely resembles a shortcut, it's just the acceptance that ever-increasing long-term level of, levels of success come from this. And this only – this is the thing doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. That's it, which is the antithesis, the exact opposite of how most people operate. Listen to what Julie just told you. Most people would rather have pleasure now than forego you know, it for potential pleasure in the future. Most people never take advantage of you know, what Warren Buffett calls the what, seventh greatest uh, wonder of the universe or whatever, you know, compounding interest, for example. That's just a financial example for those of you who are more analytical. You know, they never save money. They never invest money, even though that money on average will double every seven to eight years. They'd rather spend the money now on a new TV or, you know, a new whatever. Most people live in this perpetual world of I have to have it now, give me pleasure now, even though intuitively they know that there's going to be a price to pay for that. And there is a price to pay for that, and I'll tell you what it is. You might, and I pray, and I mean this sincerely, many of you will never experience true hardship in your entire lives. You're never going to be facing down what some of the people back in 07 faced down. I don't think it's going to be that bad again, this economic cycle. It could be, but I kind of doubt if it will. So for the most part, most of you guys can get along um, just fine by having a normal you know, existence with – just realistic expectations, never really coming close to accomplishing what you're capable of accomplishing. But what you don't realize is there's an omnipresent burden that goes along with making that decision, never to basically you know, treat this, like, this life like the gift from God that it truly is. And that is a total and complete weight that you carry around with you at all times, knowing, and I'm not talking about the extra 20 or 30 pounds, though that is part of this, I'm talking about the weight of knowing you could have done something more with your life and you didn't. That is something you'll never forgive yourself for. And that, in my professional coach's opinion, is what the greatest destroyer of people's mindset is. It's not the lack of accomplishment of goals. It's not the lack of all these other things. It's the knowing that you could have done so much more with your life. And every single moment that you spend screwing around with passive lead generation things like buying buyer leads or every, all these things, every time you pass up an opportunity to do what you don't want to do and you don't want to do it at the highest level, on a subconscious level, Level, you are letting yourself down, and the more you do that, as the years pass, it becomes harder and harder to forgive yourself to the point where you just become a diminished version of you. I don't know how many of you guys are on Facebook, probably all of you. So if you go back and you look at your Facebook pictures from seven or ten years ago, are those pictures even a remote resemblance to the person you are today? Is that, is, does that, do you remember thinking and feeling like that person did? Every single one of you, with few exceptions, can look back at old pictures of yourself, and what will you notice? Probably had some more hair. <laughs> you probably were thinner. But you also probably had more of, a, more of a gleam in your eye, didn't you? You probably remember that person, that past version of you. What, would, what do you wish you would have told that past version of you? If you somehow can relate or talk to, communicate with that person from seven or ten years ago, what would you tell that person right now? What would you tell that person to do? I promise you, whatever you tell them all revolves around the same recurring thought that we try to implant permanently in all your psyches. It's doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. You would tell that person, 
to get their ass on the treadmill to put that donut down, you would tell that person to not drive past that for sale by owner or not ignore expireds or not lie to yourself and say it won't work in my market. You would tell that person to be willing to be uncomfortable for long periods of time because on the other side of that is everything you want in life, more than you can possibly imagine you can experience in life. That's what you tell that person, every single one of you, until the point in your life where you can't say that anymore. When you're, you know, something enters into your life, age for many of you, health for many of you, every single one of you are going to beat yourself up at some level, knowing that you've not ever really done what you didn't want to do when you didn't want to do it at the highest level, knowing that you always took the easy button. You won't forgive yourself for that. That's what I sense when I talk to many of you. That's what I feel, intuitively, if you will, okay, if you want to use a little woo-woo word. But that's what I feel. I feel an unbelievable feeling of disappointment in, in what you didn't do in the past. That's what we're trying to help you with this week. It's all up to you guys. You there's no, there's no the past. You can, you can you speak can't. to the future you. You can't go back. And so now is the time for that hard reset and to come to terms with the future you and not kick that can up the road to that stranger that's in your psyche and not let yourself get away with that. Now is the time. Does this make sense, Julie? I mean, the way we're expressing this, I know it makes sense to you and me. I know it, it makes sense on a one-on-one -on -one coaching call. I want it to make sense to the tens of thousands we'll of people who are listening right emails. now. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah, we will, won't we? But you know the thing is, is I know and I know on a core level they understand. But then how many of them? Here's here's what I envision, Julie, when you and I do this podcast most days. Somebody's listening to it on their computer, all the while they're screwing around, checking their texts and checking their emails. You know, they get mm -hmm. some email from some company that's trying to sell them buyer leads, and all of a sudden they're like, "Oh, cool! I don't actually have to do it." it makes me button. uncomfortable. Yeah. So yep. Julie and I are in Hawaii recently uh, doing an event for a fantastic company called Elite Pacific. And um, we are talking about the changing market, all the things we're talking about. And a lot of them, like many of you, were in disbelief, but we convinced them for the most part, I think. And one of the things I said is in 2019, and I pass this along to you, all of you, if you and this is something that really I, there was an audi audible gasp when I said this, but it's true. If you're not putting yourself in a position to hear no at least five times a day, and I don't mean no from your children or no from your spouse. I mean no from a potential client. Or no from a seller, you know, who won't, you know, you have to get better getting them to convince them to lower the price. If you're not putting yourself in a position to hear no every single day, five times you're not doing your job. That should be a minimum standard going back to that email from Linda, I believe. You should be putting yourself in a position to hear no at least five times a day. How many of you live to never hear the word no? You will do things, spend yourselves into oblivion, never have any sort of never develop any sort of skill, never do anything because you're so fearful of hearing the word no. You're so fearful of feeling anything that remotely resembles rejection. It's interesting, isn't it? That is the thing that the future version of you is going to hate on the current version of you for not getting past. I promise you. Think about what we're talking about, guys. This is the stuff that moves the needle. This is the stuff that changes lives. And look, I don't care how overweight you are, how broke you are, how old you are. You know, here's a little fun fact. I'm reading this massive book on one of my personal heroes, somebody you guys may have heard of, Enzo Ferrari. <laughs> I'm a car guy, and I'm reading this. It's ridiculous. I didn't even realize it was like a billion-page book. He didn't start creating, get this, he didn't start creating road cars until he was 49. So until he was basically at half-life, let's call it that, he didn't actually start creating road cars until he was 49. He didn't really start increasing any levels of success until he was in his early 60s. So what we remember him as today, especially if you're a car person, it's Ferrari's arguably the most incredible brand in the world. There's nothing that comes close. That got started by a guy who most people would be considered, you know, to be half done, you know, heading for retirement. And that's when he found his greatest levels of success. So for those of you who are discounting yourselves because you think you're too old in your 60s or whatever, get the hell over it. What are you waiting for? You guys only live once and you're dead a real long time. You need to never forget that. So as long as there's breath in your lungs and still, as long as you have even an inkling of ambition, you need to exploit that. Then you will forgive yourself for all those years where basically you were looking for the easy button. Listen to what we're telling you. We're not full of shit. We know what we're talking about. Employ what we're talking about. If you guys need us for anything, it's Tim at Tim and Julie Harris .com or Julie at Tim and Julie Harris .com. Be prepared for uh, 
you know, podcasts like this the whole year because we know we have to drill down harder on all of you guys because the market's going to be drilling down harder on you. So we need to make it so this is your safe place where you can come and you can get your thoughts back together. You can get your motivation back together, and we'll give you specific direction. In the meantime, I have homework for you, and you must do this. I need you to go to freecoachingcallsforagents.com and speak to one of our new member coaches. Obviously, they're going to tell you a little bit about Premier Coaching, but you're also going to get a whole bunch of free books. The Real Estate Treasure Map is not a wimpy you know, little one-page business plan. It is a comprehensive business plan that will take you through all the five areas of life which you need to be setting goals. It's going to help you drill down on the action plan for each of those goals. It's going to take you through all your finances. It's going to go through all, ask you all the questions that you don't want to have asked so that you can actually have a business plan that you're proud of. If you're married or have a partner, I strongly suggest you do that with them. It, it's relevant to them because this is, you know, this is about your future. So go to freecoachingcallsforagents.com. You guys have a fantastic day. We'll talk to you on the show tomorrow. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris.